What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to compare python and go in terms of speed so let us get right into it all right so we're going to compare python and go in terms of speed today but we're not going to use concepts like concurrency so we're not going to show that go is faster because go can use concurrency because that's the special skill the main strength of the go language we're just going to show that go itself the, the basic Go language is just faster than Python when it comes to execution time. So in order to show that, we're just going to write a simple sorting script. So we're going to, to write a Python script that sorts a list of numbers, and we're going to write a Go script that sorts a list of numbers. And in order to do that, we're just going to open up a basic Python script here, so program.py. And what we're going to do is we're going to import the time module and the random module and we're going to just create a list of random numbers. So we're going to say my list is an empty list and then for for uh, variable in range and then we're going to just generate 100,000 numbers and we're going to append them to my list. So my list append um, actually random dot rand int from zero to 100, something like that. So just 100,000 random numbers between zero and 100. And uh, this is the list. And then we're just going to sort that list and measure the execution time. So my list dot sort like that. That's all we have to do. And in order to measure the time, what we're going to do is we're going to say start equals time dot time. And once we're done, we're going to say end equals time dot time. Notice that we're also including the process of generating the numbers. So this is also something that we have to compare here. And in the end, we're just going to say print formatted string and we're going to have um, the execution time. So we're going to say end minus start, but we're going to multiply by a thousand. So we get the milliseconds instead of the seconds because Go is going to output the seconds, uh, the milliseconds, sorry. Uh, and then we're just going to, actually I made a mistake here, we need to use parentheses here, like that. And then we're just going to say ms for milliseconds. There you go. So this is the basic script, and now we're going to do the same thing in Go. And the Go script is going to be quite similar. We're going to just, let me just um, create a new file here. And we're going to call this file program.go. And we're going to open that in a new tab here. And here we're just going to import uh, the basic, or actually we need to say package main first. And we're going to import the basic libraries that we're going to need. Those are FMT for the basic formatting. We need time for the measurement. And we need sort. And we need math random like that or actually math rent is enough there you go and then we can go ahead and say function main and in here we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in python we're just going to say start equals time dot now and then we're going to generate a list of numbers and then we're going to sort that number uh that list sorry so we're going to say my list like that, and it's going to be an integer list is just going to be defined here as an empty list. And then we're going to say for i starting at zero, as long as i is less than 100,000, i plus plus, we're just going to append random numbers. So we're going to say my list equals append my list and a random number which we generate by saying rand dot int n 100 so a maximum of 100 or actually 99 i think um and that's what we do and that's actually it then we need to sort it by saying sort dot int s this is how you sort integer lists my list there you go and then we're going to say duration is going to be time since start like that. And we're going to say 
format.println and we're going to print the duration. So I hope I didn't make any mistakes here, but that's the exact same functionality. So again, we start the clock, we create an empty list, we append 100,000 random integers uh, between zero and 100, and then we sort that list and then we measure the time. So that's it, we're going to quit that now. Uh, there you go. Did I have a mistake in there? I think I saw a typo. Yeah, there you go. And now we're going to say Python three program dot py. And you can see it took 163 milliseconds. And if I say go run program dot go, you can see it only took 31 milliseconds. So again, we can run that multiple times. You can see the average number here is somewhere around 165, 175, 169, and so on. For Python and for Go, it is way less than that. So 30 milliseconds, 29, 29, 31, 29, and so on. So as you can see in Go, we're way faster in the actual execution. Now, sometimes it's going to take longer to include modules or libraries and so on. But all in all, the, the basic programming language, just the basic sorting is faster than in Python. Now, of course, we could now argue that the sorting algorithm of Go is just more efficient than the one of Python. So let's go ahead and write our own bubble sort algorithm, which is going to be the exact same in Go and in Python, and again, compare the speed then. So what we're going to do is we're going to again edit the program.py and instead of using the sort function here, we're just going to write our own function. So we're going to say def bubble sort, and we're going to pass, uh, let's just call it my list again. We're going to pass my list here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say n equals length of that list. So we're actually, let's just make it fixed sized. It's 100,000. Um, and then we're going to say swapped equals equals true by default. And then we're going to say while swapped. So while still something is being swapped, we're going to say swap equals false. So we just assume that we're done. And then we're going to say for i in range from one to the size. So from one to n, we're going to say if my list i minus one is larger or greater than my list i, then the order is not correct. And we need to say my list i, my list i minus one needs to be swapped with my list i minus one and my list i. So basic position swap here. And then we of course say swap is true because we changed something. There you go. And this is a basic bubble sort. And at the end, we can also go ahead and just print the results. So we're going to say print my list. And there you go. So we're going to do the same process here. And now we're not going to take this uh, random initiation process into account. So we're going to skip that. Um, and we're just going to measure the sort itself. And we're going to say bubble sort my list. There you go. So then we have an empty list. We fill it up with values. This is not taken into account. We're just measuring the execution time of this thing here. Now we're going to, uh, to do the same thing for Go. So we're going to open up program Go in a new tab here. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to write our own uh, sort function. And we're going to do that by saying function bubble sort, and we're going to pass uh, an integer list, which has 100,000 elements. And here we're going to say n is 100,000 swapped equals true. And for swapped, we don't have a while loop in Go. So for swapped this is the same as while swapped. For swap, we're just going to say swapped is being assumed to be false. And then we're going to say for i starting at one and i being less than n. 
I plus plus and in here, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to say if my list I minus one is greater than my list I. If that is the case, we're going to just swap these. And the syntax is actually the same, we're going to say my list, I minus one, my list, I is going to be swapped with, with my list, I, my list, I minus one, like that. And we're going to say swapped equals true. And in the end, of course, we need to print the result. So we have the exact same code. So print line, the sorted list, which is my list. I mean, actually, we don't have to do that. Maybe we're going to remove that. Uh, because that's not really relevant how fast a language uh, prints stuff. Uh, but what we need to do now is we need to just replace this, we're going to have this again in a separate line down here. And we're just going to measure the sorting itself. So we create a random list again, and then we're going to pass that list uh, here and we're going to instead of calling sort dot ints, we're going to call bubble sort on this list. So on my list, we're going to call bubble sort. And we have a problem here, probably because I didn't specify 100,000 here. And what do I have here? It's not a slice anymore. Okay, maybe we can, can change that by just passing, removing that maybe here. Does that work? Oh, we need to assign this. Now it should be working. And we don't need this, obviously. There you go, it looks good. Now let's give it a try. We're going to say Python three program.py. And this takes quite some time, actually, maybe we're choosing too many elements. Okay, this takes way too long. I hope this is because of the runtime complexity and not because I made a mistake. So let's just check it out again program.py let's try with uh, with 10,000. So we're just going to remove a zero here. And we're going to remove a zero here. And then we're going to do the same thing and see if it works. Still takes quite some time. Okay, just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Let's see if I choose 100. If it works. There you go. Okay, so it's actually because of that. So let's just go ahead with a 1000 instead of 100. And we had it here. Let's see if it works. You can see 205 milliseconds. So actually, I think we should be able to to go with where are we? Let me just close all of this. Let's go with 10,000. We have to wait a little bit, but 10,000 is probably more. Uh, it's probably better to see the results. And let's see how long it takes with 10,000. Shouldn't take too long, but it takes quite some time. I mean, the complexity is quadratic with bubble sorts. So, and actually, I'm not even sure if the complexity of this particular algorithm that I'm using here is quadratic. So maybe let's just go ahead and pick a 1000. That's enough. We're just comparing the algorithms, uh, or actually the languages after all. So if we use a 1000 elements, we have 225 milliseconds in Python. And now let's go ahead and change the number in Go as well. And here we're going to pick a 1000 as well. Or did I pick a 1000 now or a 100? I'm confused now. Okay, a thousand, we picked a thousand. So let's do this and go again and or as well. And down here, we also need to change this to a thousand. Like that. So now it should work. And we're going to say go run program dot go. And as you can see, it just takes 18 milliseconds. So it's not the algorithm. It's not that go uses a more efficient algorithm that has a better runtime complexity. Even if I run this multiple times, we're going to see that the time is way better 
than that of Python. And this is just because Go is running faster. And those examples, of course, are just trivial examples. We're not really talking about, about a lot of uh, advanced stuff here. But in general, Go is just faster. It's, it's statically typed. It's lower level. And because of that, it's just faster than Python, which is a dynamically typed language. And I just wanted to show you that in this video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel in order to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.